Yeah, it was great to spend uh, a little bit of time with the guys uh, over the last couple of days. I've uh, uh, got some great men, wonderful men who love the Lord uh, in uh, in this church. There we go. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just overwhelmed with the sense of the Holy Spirit here ministering. And I don't know about you, but I'm really open to what the Lord wants to do and say this morning. And I just pray if there's something that I share that resonates with you, would you just say, Lord, yeah, that's what I want, Lord. That's what I want. Just quietly, just allow him to minister to your heart, um, inspire you, bless you. And what's really important is that we receive the word today, but we just don't be hearers of the word, but we be doers of the word. And uh, uh, we allow God's word to uh, lead us. Yeah, it's wonderful to be here. I, I grew up in Melbourne. I'm a Melbourne person. Uh, I served for uh, about 16 years as the chaplain of the Melbourne Footy Club. Uh, got to serve in uh, high performance sport across Oz. And, and for me, I was saying to Cade last night, it wasn't about sport for me. It was all about how do I make Jesus real out in the community. Uh, I, I served, pastored a church during the 90s. And my deep abiding passion was how do we take the grace and the mercy of God that we receive, that we know out into the community, into the streets. And uh, God opened up opportunities for me to do that. And I'm still so passionate about not just coming to church. I love, man, I'm, I'm up the front here going, I'm loving this worship, you know, tears rolling down my eyes. I, I love Jesus with all my heart, but I also love serving him with all my heart in my life day to day. And um, wherever I might be, wherever I find God um, places me. And one of my deep passions, as Cage shared before, is just helping mobilise the church uh, outside the four walls of church. How can we take the see the kingdom of God come? And uh, we say, Lord, let your kingdom come. But what does it mean for God's kingdom to come to my workplace? Many of you go to work this week. Some of you go to school. Some are at home. You know the neighbours in your street. You, you go and have lunch and dinner and meals with family in a social setting. And when you're in that community, what does it mean for God's kingdom to come? And it's that his grace and his mercy might be known to those people in your workplace. And you're the only person most likely that those people will ever know or hear about or see Jesus through your life. And we've all got that responsibility to take God's grace and God's mercy to those around about us. So, uh, yeah, deeply passionate about that. I'm actually not, I'm not, I'm not going to be talking about that uh, this morning. I, I, I want to talk on the subject of listening. What type of listener are you? There's the question right there. What type of listener are you? Um, it's uh, one of the things that I've really been enjoying lately in my own life in the last few years in particular is just going at times into my room or into my office. I've got a couch in my office, sitting on my couch and just saying this, Dad, Papa, I'm here. Daddy, is there something you want to say to me? Just spend a moment, sometimes five minutes, ten minutes, sometimes a bit longer, saying, Papa God, I'm here. I'm listening. Please speak to me. As I sit there, uh, it's, it's just something that I've been doing a lot more lately and I was sharing with the guys yesterday morning about how God doesn't have any orphans. None of us are orphans that are in Christ. None of us are orphans. He doesn't have orphans. We are sons. We're his children by which we can call out Abba Father. This is what it says in Galatians 4 and verse 4. So if you're writing notes, Galatians 4 and verse 4, it says this, but when he set, the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law. That's us. That we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons. God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out Abba, Father. Papa. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. 
It's a wonderful promise that we now belong to the family of God. None of us are orphans. We all belong to him. We're his children by faith in Christ. And I just want to encourage you as I encourage the men to press in, spend time with the Lord. Say, God, I'm listening. This morning I want to talk about this topic, this idea of listening is so very, very important. Um, I used to go into the MCG and uh, walk in during game days and there'd be all the green coats, all the guys that would uh, welcome people or be security on doors. And there was this one guy, Ashley, who I walked in and got to know and I walked past Ashley for years and I never knew his name and I thought, oh, I'll just, oh, mate, what's your name? And he goes, oh, he goes, my name's Ashley. And I go, get Ashley, I'm Cam. And he goes, oh, you're the padre, you're the father. And I'm thinking, what? Oh, oh yeah, the, he goes, you're the priest, aren't you? I go, yeah, yeah I'm the chaplain of the footy club. And um, he goes, yeah, I'm Ashley. I said, nice to meet you, Ashley. And he goes, yeah, good. And a few weeks later, I'm walking into the MCG again and I walk past Ashley and, and he's there like white as a ghost. And I walked past him and as I walked past him, the Holy Spirit just prompted me, said, there's just something not right. I, could, I observed that he looked white, he looked pale, he didn't look in a very good place, maybe. And I walked past him and I was going to get busy and I just the Holy Spirit prompted me, go back and speak to him. So I went back to Ashley and I said, I said hi Ashley, how are you doing? Is everything all right? And he sort of looked at me and went, I actually know. I said, what, what's wrong? What's up? He goes, oh, I'm in so much pain. I've got arthritis all through my body and I'm just in pain. And I said, oh, it's horrible. He goes, yeah, it's terrible. I said, can I just pray? So I prayed with him there and saying to the guys yesterday that after I walked back into the rooms and I prayed, Lord, just would you heal, would you... And he was sort of a bit embarrassed because there's a lot of people around, so I was very discreet. And, and I just prayed for Ashley quickly and asked Jesus just to touch him from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, really quite quickly. I didn't know where this guy stood with anything, with faith or anything, but I offered to pray and he asked yes. So I did that. I, I went into the room and then I came out of the room to go up the race out onto the MCG turf. And as I walked past him, he went, you, me and Jesus, you. Me and Jesus. I'm thinking, what's, what's going on here? So I, uh, I went up the race and then I came down back into the rooms and I saw Ashley there sort of turn my eye to him and he goes, you, me and Jesus, you, me and Jesus. I'm going, oh, this is weird. So all day he's doing you, me and Jesus. I'm thinking, what's going on here? And uh, I went up to him. I said, mate, what's going on? Well, why are you saying you, me and Jesus? He goes, well, years ago he said, Cameron, I want to tell you I'm Coptic Orthodox and I love Jesus. And I told all my friends about Jesus and my daughter said, Dad, you embarrass us. And so, Dad, don't always say, talk about Jesus with everyone. And he said, since that time, I've never spoken about Jesus. But when you prayed for me and asked for healing, he said, I realise I love Jesus. It's you, me and Jesus. I'm thinking, yeah, come on. That's what we want. The importance of being able to listen to the Spirit and be moved and prompted. What type of listeners are we? When you're talking with someone, how do you, do you listen to them or do you just hear what they're saying? I get, con by the way, I get convicted talking on this because sometimes I'm a, t who's a, who's a really good listener? Give me a wave. Who's a really terrible listener at times? Give me a wave. Who, who talks a lot here? Ra raise your hand. Who talks a lot? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's wives, husbands. I noticed you didn't put your hand up at church on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, well, I noticed you didn't either. <laughs> so what type of listeners are we? Why is listening important? I'm just going to reflect, share a few things from God's word. And I just hope you take something away from this. If we can become great listeners, you know what? We'll become excellent communicators. We've got to start with listening. So let's have a look at a few different types of listeners. And maybe you can go, oh, that's a little bit like me. Let's have a look at the first one. So the first one, are you a combative listener? You know, you're armed and ready for war, you know. Darling, did you put, your, did you put the garbage out, you know? And yes, I did. Oh, you know, and you're combative. You're ready to, you know, have a fight. You're not thinking about what's been said, but you're listening because you see it as an opportunity to push your certain point. 
Next one, next listener. Are you the analyst? Are you the person that says, oh, yes, uh uh-huh, so tell me a little bit more about yourself. Uh Uh-huh, hmm, what about this, Uh uh-huh? And you're looking to analyse people and, and you're always looking to give unsolicited answers to things. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Anyone a little bit like that? Give me a wave if you feel, oh, yeah, I can resonate a little bit with these ones. That's good. Okay, let's have a look at another listener. Are you the out to luncher? Now, I reckon I fall into this sometimes. They often have a blank look on their faces. Who's like, put up your hands if you're an out to luncher at times. Yeah, yeah, someone's talking to you and you're going, uh uh-huh, and you, mate, you're at the mall, you're buying some stuff and I've got to fix the car and... Oh, yeah, oh, gee, I've got the kids. When do I pick up the kids? And someone's talking to you and, man, you're just out to lunch, you know. I'm just somewhere else. I'm not listening, seriously. But, yeah, we can probably all put our hands up for that one. That's a good one. Okay, what's another type of listener? The twitchy listener. And it's the person that you're talking to and they're looking at their phone and their, their Apple Watch. You know, we've got all these devices now that take over conversation and we're sort of looking around. I, I used to do this really bad. I'd be talking to someone, like to someone, Pete, so I'd be talking to you and then I'd, I'd be looking at the distance. And as I'm, we're having this conversation, the person that I'm having the conversation, they'd look over their shoulder to see what I'm looking at. I'm just looking at the distance, you know, so. And do, do you know people, are you a bit like that? Who's, who's like that who can sometimes be a bit twitchy and, you know, looking around and um, it's interesting. It's other types of listeners, a couple of others, a few more. Interrupter, perched and ready for a break in the conversation. You're looking to insert your point of view. You're listening, but you're, you're listening and you're thinking about what you're about to say to someone. You've got your point of view. You like to interrupt. You're not giving a person a chance to, to share and... Then the next type of listener is a whatever listener, aloof and with little emotion. They don't seem to care about anything you have to say. They're, yeah, they're talking to you and you're, they're looking at you, eyeballing you, and you're trying to explain something. Is this person, are they, hello? <laughs> they're, so they're hearing maybe, but they're emotionally disengaged, disconnected, and uh, not listening with... They might be listening with their ears but not with their eyes or with their heart engaged with you. And finally, the last one here is the fully engaged listener. This person's constantly aware. They listen with their ears, they listen with their eyes, they listen with their hearts and they try to put themselves in the speaker's shoes. This is listening at the highest level. There are moments, times where... I just haven't been a good listener, but I found one of the most powerful things to do to help people's hearts be soft, people feel valued, is that you stop and you listen to them and you engage them. And you're listening with your heart. I want to get to understand and know this person I'm speaking to, what motivates them, what drives them. The reason I bring up all these different listening styles is because I want to tell you this morning, God is the most amazing listener. He listens to us. He's engaged with us. He wants to get to know us. He wants to get to know me. He wants to get to know you. He wants to know what your fears are. What are the things you're battling with? What are the things you... Whoever struggles with anything, give me a wave. We struggle. He wants to know your struggles. He wants to hear what you're going through. And we know he's a great listener because he's a great... He asks the most brilliant questions. I was flying on a virgin... Uh, airplane many years ago and I was reading uh, just different business people were talking about some things they felt were really important in business and this one guy said something that I've never ever forgotten I think it is absolutely brilliant it's something I'll, I'll, I'll never lose touch with and he was asked what makes for a great leader in a business and he said great leaders listen 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 communicate communicate, communicate. 
before you want to be a great communicator, before you even want to be a great communicator of the gospel to your friends, I think it's so essential that you become a great listener. If you want to be a leader, an effective leader, you need to be a very effective listener. If you want to be a great parent, I think it's essential and really important. You do want to communicate to your children. But I think as parents too, it's very important to listen. So what kind of listener is God? God is a fully engaged listener. He's fully engaged. Thanks, Naomi. You can turn that off now. Thank you. Appreciate that. Turn to your Bibles, Genesis 3, 8 to 11. And we see that God's an amazing listener because the first interaction he has with humanity, with mankind, is with Adam in the garden. And we see the heart of God in verse 8, Genesis 3 in verse 8. It says there, Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? God asks an amazing question, where are you? Who reckons God knows where they were? He did. He's God. So why would God go, where are you? Oh, he knew where they were. God's amazing. He calls out, where are you? Adam responded, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who told you that you were naked? God asked another question, who told you? You reckon God knew who told him? (laughs) I reckon so. And then he asked another question, have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Three wonderful questions, helping Adam understand what took place, asking questions powerful, leading him to Adam understanding what's... I I reckon, man, if I was God, I'd just go, mate, you're hiding, you've eaten of the fruit, mate, that's it, gone, you know. You're in trouble. Man, you're in trouble. But God asked questions, wonderful, he listened. He was walking in the cool of the day. God loves spending time with us. He wants us to spend time with him, to hang with him. To, he wants to get to know us. Cade, tell, he's asked, Cade, how are you doing? I say, God knows how Cade's doing, but he wants to hear from us. We see Jesus throughout the gospel, blind Bartimaeus, this guy that's blind. What is it that you'd have me do for you? <laughs> Hello, I'm blind. You should know God, Jesus asks, like his father. Ask great questions. We see this in the life of Christ. Jesus asked amazing questions. In fact, when he was missing, he was 12 years of age in Luke 2, 46. And it says there on the third day, they found him, his parents found him in the temple. He went missing. They went and found him in the temple. And it says there he was sitting with the Jewish teachers, listening to them, asking them questions. And they were all amazed. This young boy was listening to them, asking questions. We see Jesus, like his father, someone who listens, comes to understanding, takes a lot of humility to listen to people at times. We'd often like to talk about ourselves a little bit more. But I think one of the most powerful things to see hearts soften before the Lord. Tell me about yourself. I was... uh, I, I was speaking at a, a prayer breakfast, a Merrill prayer breakfast, and we had one of our state politicians there, and she was an Australian gold medalist, um, very well known, and she was there, uh, work now in politics, and we we're talking about Jesus. I had Roddy Vargas, and um, who played soccer, and um, uh, Jason. Um, Smith, who played basketball for Australia, and we were just talking to him. These guys were just sharing about Jesus. I loved it. They were just sharing their testimony about who Jesus was. Anyway, we didn't talk about religion. It was about Jesus because that's what the gospel is. The gospel is Jesus. And they were sharing about him. And uh, 
this lady beelined me at the end and she said, Cameron, that's what it's all about. She said, it's not about religion. It's about an epiphany. It's about Jesus. It's about, and I'm standing here going, I knew this lady. I knew she was actually quite anti-God. And, but it was like the Holy Spirit spoke to her and I'm going, I didn't even, she didn't even say, hi, I'm so-and-so and, and I didn't get to introduce her. And I said, yeah, you're right, it's about that. Anyway, she says, I have to go. I said, can we catch up? So we caught up about two weeks later in my office. Um, she, she dropped by her um, parliament car, dropped her off. She came in and, and, and she sat, sat in and I asked her one question. I was going, Lord, what, what, what do you want to say? Here's somebody who's really searching. And I asked her one question and I said, Everyone, she's a very public figure. I said, tell me about your, tell me your story. And with that, she just bored her eyes out. Heart soft. Tender. Ready. I realise that spending time with footy players that, and, and people that are important, those that aren't important, the boot stutters, the, whoever it is that I'm the power of asking questions, getting to know people and how it softens heart. It makes people feel valued. When you show interest and when you listen to somebody, that fully engaged listener, people feel valued. And we as people of faith need to be excellent at being able to get to know people because God's interested in people. And one of the great gifts that he's given us is the ability to listen, to ask questions. I want to understand, I want to get to know you and understand Pete, what what makes you tick, what, what your challenges are, because I can stand with you. And you go, thank you, thank you for asking me questions. People never ask me these type of questions. Sometimes our kids, we need to take a moment. As a parent, we might want to tell them stuff, but I want to tell you there's a power in just saying, hey, talk to me about what you're going through. Where are you? Where you're at? Who told you you're naked? Asking them to be vulnerable, understanding there's vulnerability there. And, and as you talk to them and ask them questions, their hearts soften. I'm really, I really pray that this would speak to some people here today, that you've been having it really hard to break through in conversation maybe in relationships that you're having. It might be at a business level and a family level. There's a real key here for you to take away and say, okay, I'm going to change my approach. I'm going to listen and hear what the Lord says. Jesus was an amazing question asker. He, he'd ask great questions. He listened. In Matthew 16, 13 and 16, Jesus asked his disciples, who do the people say the Son of Man is? They said, oh, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah. And, and then he asked the question of the disciples who he'd been with for virtually three years, he asked them, so who do you guys say? He asked all the apostles, all the disciples that were, who do you guys say? Now, you reckon if you were together, for pretty much three years, you'd have a pretty good understanding. But Jesus really wanted to hear their response. Who do you think I am? And Peter spoke up and said, you're Jesus, the Son of God, the living God. When we spend time with Papa God and say, God, do you want to say anything to me? We're becoming very vulnerable. I find it hard just doing that with Cade. Is there anything you want to say to me? Oh, I'd, I, I was thinking that before. I'm thinking oh, that'd be pretty hard for me to do. Imagine if you turned to the person beside you and said, oh, is there anything you really, really want to say to me? That'd be pretty hard, I reckon, maybe. Do you reckon? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> depends who's sitting next door to you. Yeah, it depends who is it. If it's mum, mum wants to say a lot of stuff to me. Dad, dad might be a bit kinder, but maybe not. If it's my wife, my spouse, is there anything you really want to say to me? Because I want to listen. It's actually a very vulnerable place to be, isn't it? Especially with God. I, I actually, it, most times I find it hard to do. 
God, is there something you want to say to me? Just share, a few weeks ago, you just said, Cam, do you have any bitterness towards people? Are you holding grudges? And I thought, no, I'm not. He goes, are you holding any bitterness and grudges? And I go, well, actually, yeah, I am. He says, I can't. How can I forgive you if you can't forgive those? I'm going, I'm sorry. What I found about God is he's very gentle and very kind. We move into a place of vulnerability and it's scary, but he's so kind and so gentle and so loving. I want to encourage you as God's people to be people who spend time listening. Five minutes. Just go into your bedroom, close the door, sit there and say, Dad, I'm here. He wants to get to know us. I love Jesus because he not only listened with his ears for understanding, he understood people's body, the way they responded. He listened for understanding we don't have time to go in for it, but the woman at the well, go fetch, can you fetch me some water? He has this wonderful interaction. He's listening, he's watching people's body language. I was sharing with the guys a story about a lady, Karen, at the footy club who, um, when one of our footy players had cancer and it got announced and the next day a lot of people were upset and this lady, Karen, she was in the in the rooms and... I walked past her and I thought, I need to talk to Karen. She's looking a bit sad. A lot of people were looking sad. And I said, Karen, I said, how are you doing? She, I said, it's sad about Jim. And she said, yeah, it's really sad about his cancer and all of that. And we're chatting for a little bit more. And I, I just noticed I'm now, not, I'm now not, not listening with my ears. I'm listening with my, my eyes. I'm listening to her body. I'm engaged in how she's responding to things. She f- seemed pretty flat. And I said, is everything all right? And with that, a bit of her eyes teared up. And um, she said to me, um, he said, yeah, I was in hospital this week. I said, why, why were you in hospital? She said, oh, I went in there. Um, they found cancer in me, in my body. A little tear ran down. I said, is everything? Now, this lady, Karen, told me many times, Cam, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in the God stuff and... But here's this woman just at this very difficult moment in her life. So listening requires that we not only watch what the people are saying, but also body language as well. And we see Jesus is brilliant at this. I, I just want to I want to touch on a few great reasons from the Word of God, Scripture, why listening is so important, and it's important to God. I actually believe very strongly, very deeply, that He wants His people, us his followers, to be listening to him, be a people who listen to him. And we see it throughout scripture. The first thing is that listening strengthens relationship. If you want a strong relationship, you need to be a good listener. You need to be a developed listener. If you want a strong marriage, you need to be a good listener. If you want a strong church, it's important for leaders to listen. It's important for people to listen and receive, hear. It's important for communities to grow, to be listening communities. And we see this in the book of Kings, in 2 Kings 18.12. It says there that Israel was overtaken by the Assyrians and they asked the question, why? And in verse 12, it says, this happened because they had not obeyed the Lord their God, but had violated his covenant. They neither listened to the commands nor carried them out. They blocked their ears. And sometimes in our walk and our faith, we can block areas. Uh, sometimes we don't go and spend time with Papa God because we're scared what he's going to say to us. I don't know about you, but I know there's moments. So we block our ears. And, but I don't want that relationship with God. I want a strong relationship with him. They stop listening. The community was overtaken. The relationships broke down. The community broke down because they refused to listen and obey. Listening strengthens relationships. Another reason in Proverbs 13.10 is a great reason why we want to be great listeners is that you build personal credibility. You build personal cred. You show that you value people. Proverbs 13.10 says this, Arrogant know-it-alls stir up discord, but wise men and women 
listen to each other's counsel. Arrogant know-it-alls stir up discord, but wise men and women listen to each other's counsel. There have been times I've been really arrogant. I'm on the warpath, you know. I'm not listening. I know what's right. And you don't build cred that way. You build cred when you listen to people. People feel valued. Get to know people. Maybe there's people in your workplace that you need to, at the lunch table, just get to know a little bit better. Say, tell me your story. Were you born? Listen for understanding. What motivates that person? How can God minister to and speak to them? They'll feel valued. Hearts will soften. I love Jesus with the woman at the well. Her heart softened. He had this conversation. He listened to her. When you do that, if you're ever in a business meeting, they say in business too that if you want to stay in control of any conversation, you ask questions. You don't talk. We love, People love to talk, don't they? But if you're in a conversation with somebody, don't talk. Ask questions and you, can, and you can control the conversation going. If you want to share faith with people, don't talk to people like that. Ask questions. And then at moments, at the right time, you can speak into their, into their world. So you build personal cred with people. If you want to build credibility with those around about you, be a good listener. I'm sorry if this... And some of you might go, yeah, Cam, I know all this stuff, but there's some people here that just really need to hear this. So you establish friendships. Some, some of you might say, I don't have many friends. Could it be that you're talking a lot and you're not listening? Ooh, sorry, a bit of a raw nerve there. Maybe you're talking too much and people don't want to hang with you because you're always talking. I, I shared this at church and, you know, people are laughing. <laughs> and there's a lot of elbows going on. And, and, um, but it was wonderful because some of those people that were talking and realised they talk a lot, they said, Cam, thank you for this message because I know I've got to stop talking. I've got to start asking questions more. We can go to God in prayer all the time. And this is coming to my next point. This is a really important one. When we pray, we're talking to God. He's listening. Think about that. All our, God is up there listening to all the prayers. But he loves it when we listen to him. Did you know that God refuses to answer the prayers of his people who will not listen? Have a look at this. For third reason, God answers our prayers. Proverbs 28.9, it says there in Proverbs 28.9, God has no use for the prayers of the people who won't listen to him. Wow. And if I'm just praying all the time, so waiting on the Lord is that time where we go, hey, I'm just listening. I want to hear from you. Lord, speak to my heart. Is there stuff in my life that you need? What is it you need to deal with? And God just doesn't go bang and smash you with all. He just gently helps you navigate through stuff. We give him time. You might be saying, God, you're not answering any of my prayers. My question is, are you listening? Are you inclining your ear to him? Are you listening to him? Is this all right? I hope I'm not. Is that okay? Is this word okay? Yep. Three, four, five people. That's good. A um, little bit of a different type of message, but I think one that's really important from Scripture so that we can grow closer to him. And finally... A fourth great reason for listening, it supercharges your influence as a person for the kingdom of God. Revelation 2.11 says, are your ears awake? Listen, listen to what the Spirit is saying. We want to be a church, we want to be a people who our ears are alive to and listening to the Holy Spirit. We, we've got ears to hear. You know, there's a difference between hearing and listening. Hearing is, yeah, I hear you but I don't understand. Listening is, I hear you, but I'm understanding what you're saying. So the writer saying here, listen, listen to what the Spirit is saying. Just, oh yeah, I hear what the Spirit's saying. No, listen for understanding. Ah, I get it. Okay, I'll respond. God, that you give us ears that not just hear. Now, a lot of you are just hearing what I'm saying this morning, but I pray for you that you might say, 
hey, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm understanding it. I need, yep, all right. I, I, I want to become a better listener. I want to become a better listener. Not only of the Lord and of what the Spirit's saying, but also those around about us. And mark my words, as you become a better listener, you'll become a better communicator. You'll be able to speak into people's lives because you're listening. Uh, you'll, be a, you'll be a better person to, to uh, lead and to serve because you're hearing what the Spirit's saying. God speaks to your heart. And uh, I think it's so very important. It supercharges your influence powerfully. A few final thoughts and then I'll just wrap up and thank you for your attention with this. But again, I just want to encourage you to be great listeners. Listen, listen, listen. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Share the gospel by all means, but understand the power of listening. Sometimes we don't listen because we think listening to people means that we agree with them. So we refuse. I'm not listening to that person. I'm not spending time with that person. Oh, that person's, man, they're out there. They're radical or they're, they're, they have a different faith and religion. So I'm not going to listen to them. But I actually love listening to people who totally differ with my points of view and my faith. Don't think for one moment that listening means that you agree with them. You're listening to understand them and help them. And the amount of times that I've spoken to people who say they're atheists and I tell why are you an atheist? There's a question. Why are you an atheist? Oh, I don't believe God would be horrible and nasty and all of that. And I go, I agree with you. I don't think God's greedy and nasty and horrible. That's not the God I know. I'm with you on that. And they're going, oh, really? Oh. But this is who I see God as. And you have an opportunity to communicate the gospel. So don't ever think that just listening to people means that you're agreeing with them. I think that's important. So don't hide from listening. Don't hide from listening. The first question ever asked is of all mankind is still the greatest question. Why? Because God is still asking it today. Where are you? Where are you? So what kind of listener is God? God is a compassionate listener. He's safe. He's dedicated. He's fully invested. He's fully engaged in your life. In Jeremiah 29, 12, God says, when you call on me, this is God saying to us, when you call on me, when you come and pray to me, I will listen. God is listening to you. He wants to get to know you. He's saying, where are you? If you haven't been spending time in daddy's presence, in papa's presence with Abba Father as a child, I want to implore you, encourage you to spend time with him. I was standing around the water cooler listening to some of our trainers at the footy club talk about a guy named Charlie and they're saying Charlie's dying and I sort of as a chaplain you loiter with intent you sort of just hang around and you listen to conversations and I heard these four trainers talking about Charlie and how Charlie used to be at the footy club and he's now dying of cancer and I was listening in and I thought I wonder who this Charlie is and, and I asked Terry or Kevin the trainer I said Kevin so who's Charlie? He goes, oh, he used to work for the club. He used to do a lot of good stuff. He was a volunteer and he's dying. I said, what hospital is he in? He goes, she, oh, the Mercy Hospital. I said, oh, okay. I said, oh, I might see if I can drop in there. Anyway, a couple of days later, I'm driving down the road and, and I get a nudge from the Holy Spirit. That's the Mercy Hospital. I was driving past it and I thought, oh, I was going to drop in and see that guy. I didn't know this guy from a bar of soap, but I pulled in. I got a car spot. I... I walked into the hospital and I said, is Charlie so-and-so here? And they said, yeah, he's up on this floor. So I went up there. I was wearing my, my Melbourne tracksuit top. So, and I walked in and there's this man, this old man lying on a bed in a, in a ward. There were no other people in the ward. And his daughter was beside him. And I walked in. I said, oh, good age. Is this Charlie? He goes, yeah. And he had gloves on and all his skin was peeling off his face. He was probably about 80, uh, close to 90 years of age. And... 
And I said, Charlie, my name's Cameron. I'm, uh, I'm from the footy club. And I heard Kevy and the guys, oh, he went Kevy. And I, I said, um, I thought I'd just drop in to say hi, say g'day. And he, he was wrapped and his daughter was there. And, and, I, and I sat down and I said, Charlie, tell me your story. How did you get involved in the footy club? And for about 40 or 50 minutes, he just shared the story of all the things he was doing. And as I was sitting there, I was saying, I was asking the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what do you want to say to Charlie? I'm listening, Holy Spirit. What do you want to say to him? And the Holy Spirit uh, prompted me to say, blessed are the merciful, for they'll receive mercy. So we got to the end of, of about an hour of him sharing his story. I was listening. I was really interested. I was genuinely interested in his story. And... Um, at the end of that, I said, Charlie, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot now and it's been so good to meet you. I, I said, uh, I don't know if this means anything to you, mate, but just as you were talking there, I, I just felt stirred to share something that I think God might be wanting to say to you. And I said, blessed are the merciful, for they'll receive mercy. Can I pray for you? The moment I asked him, can I pray for you? He began to sob. Ah, really loud and I freaked out. I'm sitting there going, what have I done? Just triggered. Oh, and he was sobbing and crying. Ah, ah. He was sobbing. My reflection now is it was tears of repentance. His daughter was saying, it's okay, Dad. I'm going, it's all right. Sorry, Charlie. And he was loud. Thank goodness there wasn't anyone there. They'd be thinking, mate, what are you doing? And he, after it felt like about two or three minutes, but it must have been like 30 seconds of loud sobbing. He, and I prayed for him and I said, Jesus, I thank you that you love Charlie. And I thank you that you show mercy to those that show mercy. And Charlie's been a man who's shown mercy. I thank you for him in Jesus' name. I said goodbye and I said, if I got a chance in the next couple of days, I'll drop by again and see him. And I was. About three days later, I turned up there and the whole family were around the bed saying their last farewell to Charlie. When I, when I left that first time, I'm thinking, God, what just took place then? Did Charlie just meet with you? And I walked away thinking, I think you've just shown and revealed yourself to Charlie. I get there that day and the family's saying bye and, and the daughter said, oh, Dad, Cam's here and the family went their way and he was blind at this stage and he, didn't, he only had literally hours to go. He reached out his hands, he grabbed me, pulled me right up to him and he said, thank you, thank you, thank you. I knew at that moment, Charlie met with Jesus. My reflection is sometimes when we're listening, the Holy Spirit will prompt you to act and to do things. I want to be obedient. Lord, I want to have ears inclined to the Spirit, what you're doing, what you're saying. I want to hear you. And then sit and listen. Allow people to share their story. Hearts open up. It's opportunities to minister to people. Let's be a church. Can I encourage you to be, let's be people who commit ourselves to listening, to valuing others, to listen with understanding and to minister the grace and the mercy of God to those around about us. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we want to be a people who incline our ear to you, to listen to you, 
to hear from you. Dad, we hear you calling. Where are you? Where are you? Adam, where are you? Cam, where are you? Cade, where are you? Kevin, where are you? Sue, Naomi, where are you? You want us to spend time in your presence, listening to you, hearing your words. Lord, if there's enmity between us and you, Lord, would you forgive us? Would you wash us? Lord, if we're allowing fear to stop us from drawing close to you, Jesus, I just pray, would you cause that fear to be cast aside? We want to incline our ears to you. We want to listen to you. Help us to be people who listen. Listen, listen to you, to your word. Place our confidence, our trust in you, I pray. That your name may be glorified, that our relationship with you may grow stronger and stronger every day, we pray. Lord, I thank you for these wonderful people here, your servants, those that love you and walk with you. Would you continue to bless them and anoint them, their feet, their hands, Lord, to serve you in their community, in their workplace. Give them ears to hear people, the story of people in their workplace, those down at the sports club, at the gym, riding bikes together. Would you bless them? Cause them to be wonderful, wonderful, faithful servants of the Most High God in their community, in their marriages, in their families, I pray. Lord, help us have ears to listen to you and to what your word and what the Spirit is saying. I pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.